It's Sunday morning on CBS, and here again is Charles Osgood. The sheer joy of giving wasn't the only thing that drew crowds to the stores this holiday season. As Tracy Smith of The Early Show tells us, there were visions of rewards dancing in many shoppers' heads. Aha! Uh -huh. Cookies! Terry Galt has one rule when she shops. <laughs> I just can't stand to pay full price and I won't. She describes herself as the queen of cheap. She took us along to Ralph's supermarket. Nice to see you again. Where she saved a bundle. So it was $49. It's $49.60 and it's now $11.61 as your total today. Yay! Then she hit Staples. Out of 50? That's out of 50 cents. She paid 44 cents for $28 worth of office supplies. Thank you. And who says there's no such thing Do you have any hot peppers? as a free lunch? Have a great day. Bye. At Toys R Us, she got a whole bike for free. How did she do it? As the founder of an internet shopping site called The Grocery Game, she knows her way around coupons. I want to give you my club card. Of course. But the real bang for the buck came from joining customer loyalty and reward programs, which nowadays seem to be everywhere. I think that we've been programmed to expect loyalty or reward of some sort because it's a huge marketing trend right now. Everybody's doing it, and if you're not doing it, you're probably not up to speed. So holiday shoppers now expect not only to give, but to receive something in return. Three quarters of us have joined loyalty programs, racking up airline miles, getting free shipping, free dog food, clothing discounts, all efforts by businesses to keep customers coming back. A big smile, please. Even a trip to the doctor can be rewarding. In New York, Maria Sierra stopped in for an injection of Restylane to smooth things out around her nose. $2,000. For every treatment she buys, she not only gets fewer wrinkles, she gets a gift card to a store like Nordstrom. Why a rewards program, though? It sounds like if you're happy with it, you would do it anyway. I like to say... <laughs> I got the card. I got wonderful savings. Um, it's a good thing. <laughs> the man at the other end of the needle is Dr. Michael Kane. When I first heard about a rewards program for wrestling, for something that a plastic surgeon offers, I was shocked. I mean, I've heard about it for a sweater or a book, sure, sure. drugstore. Right. But I mean, plastic surgery things are becoming more and more mainstream. I mean, this is a medical procedure, but more and more to people in the public, it's, it is almost like going to the mall and getting a nice gift for yourself. These are, are these, these the original stamp, stamp books. books. Uh, you can trace it all back to programs like Gold Bond Stamps, which started in 1938. People licked the stamps and put them in here. And Grocery stores gave out stamps based on how much you spent. Then you redeemed the stamps for free stuff. I remember wanting ice skates for some reason and got ice skates from the Gold Bond Stamps. So Marilyn Carlson Nelson is the daughter of the founder of Gold Bond Stamps, Curtis Carlson. Now she's the CEO. And Gold Bond Stamps have turned into the Gold Points program with 11 million members. The concept hasn't changed. Build up points, get free stuff. Sometimes people think that if they offer cash discounts, that that's very powerful. But there's something aspirational about saving for things that you particularly want. So do points have more power than cash? More power than discounts? We actually believe they do. See you about Petco Pets? At Petco Pet Stores, they believe that discounts will keep members of their PALS program loyal. But there's something else that brought us here. Because if you really want to understand the psychology of rewards programs, you might want to take a look at RATS. So all of these reward programs, coupons, incentives, all of these can be traced back to fundamental work that any Psych 101 student will know from, from B.S. Skinner. Behavioral psychologist B.F. Skinner studied reward systems by putting pigeons and rats in so-called Skinner boxes. When the animals pulled levers, they got rewards, or not. The rat who got food every time he pulled a lever is a lot like the shopper who gets free shipping every time he buys something from Amazon.com, or points every time he sits down to eat at TGI Fridays. 
he goes back again and again, expecting a reward. But take that reward away, and eventually the person, or the rat, changes behavior. Jack Aronson advises companies how to set up loyalty programs. What that means is when I say there's no longer free shipping January 1st, everybody who was attracted to your company because of free shipping is going to be alienated. Much the same way when the point systems stop, people don't want to interact with the companies anymore because you attracted them because of that offer, not because of who you were or what your company did. Aronson thinks many programs amount to bribing customers when what shoppers really want is good merchandise and service. We walked around the shops at Riverside Mall in Hackensack, New Jersey, and checked out the offers. Look, how could you resist getting a Gap discount for, you know, every 75 bucks you spend? It's a, I think that's a great idea for the short term because you get people to come back in again. It doesn't breed loyalty, though. Thank you for calling our headquarters. My name is Dawn. But there's something else in it for businesses besides just loyalty. Information. Hi, Mr. Martin. Can I have your card number, please? Most plans track exactly which customers are buying what. So, for example, the Carlson Companies, which owns Gold Points, can figure out who the serious eaters are at its TGI Fridays restaurants. We can give them more points because we see that they would be a very valuable customer to come twice a week to Fridays rather than once. Whereas if it's a casual customer that is out of, that happens to stop in and whose profile is a little different, you might reward them less. Thank you so much. So who's winning at all this? Are businesses gaining loyalty from customers? Terry Gulf, the queen of cheap, thinks so. And I'll go, oh, I'm going to go to Staples because they have a rewards card with them. I don't have one from this other company. So definitely I'm loyal. <laughs> They're loyal to me. Why should I not be loyal to them? <laughs> but even the head of Gold Points says it has to be about more than points. Let's be honest that we feel ultimately that customers want service. A loyalty program maybe can buy you a little time, but we can't replace excellent service. Service is the most important. Consultant Jack Aronson agrees. Loyalty doesn't come from a program. At the end of the day, Skinner's experiments also show that if the mouse doesn't like corn, the mouse doesn't like corn. He says the bottom line is that businesses have to pull the right lever too.